Thanks. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to tell you guys about something I actually did in grad school um, and how I got New York City named the rudest city in America. So uh, we're going to start this off with a eye exam for everybody. I want this to be interactive. So let me know, let me know if you see something wrong here. Anybody? Well, I thought number two, that's insane. Like, how could New York be the number two rudest city in America, not the first uh, rudest city in America? And how could LA earn that title? LA is kind of a soft city. Um, and also, there was a lot of other people um, who were wondering the same thing. How could this happen? The comment sections and, um, on this article, and this article kind of got syndicated all over the internet. And there was a lot of comments on there of people being like, what are you talking about? Some kind of heated arguments uh, between people from LA and New York. And people seemed like kind of proud of it. So um, from there, I had a hypothesis, which was basically that being rude, um, especially to tourists, is a birthright for New Yorkers. And it's like part of what makes New York City awesome. And people are kind of proud of it here. So I said, that might be something that I can play with. And the, the whole assignment that I had in grad school was to start a movement on social media. So this seemed to me like something that I could uh, operate around, something that would be really fun to, uh, to try out. So I had to have an idea, which was to reclaim the title belt and was to basically create a user-generated hub of evidence where we would capture New York City's rudeness and send it to Travel and Leisure Magazine, the publisher who put that out, and be like, hey, we deserve to win it in 2012. Are you kidding me? And uh, so that's what I went ahead and did. And just like any other uh, internet nerd, I went ahead and created a Tumblr blog that would serve as my homepage. <laughs> so that's me writing, uh, writing on the internet. So um, <laughs> what I did here is I wanted to make sure that this became something shareable and something that people wanted to talk about. So I used uh, kind of three rules that I use when I'm trying to do social media type stuff. Um, the first one was I just needed to have a really strong opinion and have a persona that stood for something. So this guy, who you can kind of see it over here, there was this manifesto over here. And it was like him basically being pissed off that he couldn't believe that this article was written and he was angry about it. And he was like a guy that was kind of counterculture. He was proud that New York was rude. He was proud that he's rude and he's proud that he's mean and he thinks that other people you know, should feel that way and go and attack LA and make it so that we win the title the next year. Um, the second was I tried to have, basically when, you're, when, when, I was, when I do this type of stuff, you try to have this thing which I call like the oh my god factor, which is basically people don't share stuff on the internet unless it makes them go oh my god blank. So oh my god that's so funny, oh my god that's so cool, that's so cute, something like that, you get the gist. So with this I tried to basically say oh my god that's so over the top rude and offensive that that's hilarious, I needed to pass it on. And the third one was basically to do something slightly controversial, take a stand and be comfortable with the fact that not everyone was going to like what I was doing. I saw in those um, in the comment sections, it was kind of a polarizing discussion that people were having. And I was okay with that because if 50% of people love you, 50% of people hate you, the 50% of people that love you are going to defend you to the death. So I figured that's where we would go. So I wanted to show you some funny content of stuff. Um, basically what I did is I had a content calendar that uh, was, was refreshed every day. And it was basically people submitting content to me. Um, I was writing some of the content stuff that I had noticed. My best friends were noticing stuff. Um, I was going around the internet and picking up on things. So there was a woman crocheting. I actually saw this. Um, taking up two seats on the sixth train. And someone bumped into it. And she looks at the guy and goes, what the fuck is wrong with you? Um, <laughs> Someone sent me this one on Twitter, um, which was a couple was taking a picture outside of a parking garage in Herald Square, which seems weird to begin with, and a homeless guy actually walked up to them and said, dude, come on, I could do better than her. So I thought that, that kind of typifies how New York is a little bit, even the homeless people are rude to, to everybody. Um, there was also some great stories. This one um, with the coach yelling at someone is a, is a great story that was emailed to me. Um, the, the gist of it is that someone was on the Metro North train, and there was a little kid kind of acting out and being loud. His mother was encouraging it. And this, everybody was kind of grumbling, getting angry about it. And then the, um, this old man got up on the train and walked up to the kid and goes, no one gives a flying fuck about what you think. They're never going to give a flying fuck about what you think. Not ever. You're welcome. And then the whole train burst into applause. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought that was a pretty good example. Um, and then we also had, um, I found some articles. There's, there's articles on ehow.com of how to deal with New Yorkers if you're visiting. There's this, you've probably all experienced this, grocery stores knowingly ripping off customers. Uh, basically writing a price on the package and then charging you a dollar more, and hey, that's New York for you. So I <laughs> figured a lot of the, it was a lot of stuff like this. There were some funny videos from the subway. There's a lot of really good stuff that people started uh, latching onto and sharing all over the internet. I also used Twitter. Um, I started a pretty funny um, uh, Twitter profile where I was basically tweeting out funny facts so if people were riding on the subway and r scrolling through Twitter, they could just get a funny, you know, rude fact of the day. Um, I was also going into rude conversations on the internet, so there's a lot of like hashtag rude, hashtag WTF, stuff like that, and just interjecting myself in the conversation, antagonizing people or sympathizing them with them, and I started kind of getting a big, pretty big following. I also started antagonizing um, journalists in New York City and also the journalist that wrote the article, um, asking him that he better change it, and I actually got in a pretty, some pretty funny banter back and forth with the guy who had written the article, and um, 
what ended up happening was, um, well, I also became an internet tough guy. I went around the internet. There was, a, there was forums and, and syndications of the article, and I started commenting stuff like that and uh, yelling at people for, for either agreeing or disagreeing. Um, I tried to get a celebrity involved. This guy's actually my neighbor, um, and he does not like me anymore. But I really wanted him to, uh, to be the spokesperson um, for this, because if, if anybody's seen um, Keeping Up with the Kardashians, this guy's pretty much the best rude New Yorker on television right now. But he didn't bite. Would have been a lot cooler story. Sorry. Um, but I also got the media's attention, which was great. The most important one being the Huffington Post. Uh, that was a really big jumping up, off point for me. And also um, Travel and Leisure Magazine's blog. So that was telling you how I got the back and forth with the editor. So they actually wrote me up um, on their website, and people were going on and commenting on it. There's a pretty funny article that he'd written about it. Uh, the Huffington Post picked it up, and there was 173 heated comments of people arguing back and forth about whether I was a jerk, whether I was the greatest champion in the world, et cetera. <laughs> it was pretty good stuff. Um, also, a couple other blogs that these people suggested that I get Lady Gaga involved. She, again, was not very interested in it. Um, so just talking about some results real quick, it actually was really effective. I only did this for three weeks as a part of a grad school project. Um, I got a 12 earned media mentions without trying to do any PR of myself, or myself outside of just harassing people on Twitter. Um, I got 5,500 page views on Tumblr, um, which is pretty wild. And I, I had a bunch of followers on Twitter, Tumblr. Um, people actually used the hashtag that I created, which is RootNYC, which is how they could send me stuff. And people were using it. Um, but the most important thing is a year later, and the reason why we're presenting this now is um, about a month ago, New York City won the title back. <laughs> <laughs> And um, if you read through this language, a lot of it is actually lifted directly from my blog. Um, so I, I'd written that we need to win the title belt back, and it says, Big Apple reclaims its heavyweight title in uh, hostility, a dubious honor it last held in 2009. He talks about deep down voters probably love New York for its flamboyant bird flipping spirit. So I can tell that I really influenced this, and it just felt kind of cool to make a, a grad school project uh, influence major culture. So thanks for uh, letting me, let me talk.